Functional groups. Functional groups determine the function of a molecule. They're usually the non-hydrocarbon part of the molecule. And they are actually more important to being able to tell how the molecule will act than the hydrocarbon part. So here are some examples of functional groups. You don't need to memorize any of them. I just wanted to give you a few examples. So if you've got an organic molecule that has this group on the end of it, it's an organic acid, and it'll have certain properties that we associate with being an organic acid. If there's an OH group like this stuck on somewhere, it's an alcohol. If there's an NH2 group, it's an amine. And if there's an oxygen between two carbons, this is an ether. Um, in biology class, you learned about amino acids, and they all had very similar structures. They had this part on them and this part. Huh, both. So we're going to look at uh, one group of chemicals that I thought you might be more familiar with, and they're easy to understand. So we're going to look at alcohols. The very simplest alcohol will just have one carbon in it with that OH group attached to it. And this carbon does not have enough bonds yet, so we're going to have to add some more H's to fill out its four bonds. And this simplest alcohol is called methanol. Meth, because of the one carbon, ane, because it's all single bonds, and this OL ending here means that it's an alcohol. It has an OH group in it, methanol. Met we write the structural formula for this, the condensed structural formula, like this, with the CH3 all together and the OH all together. And even when we write the molecular formula for methanol, we just take this dash out. We always leave the OH together. If you write it CH4O, people won't be able to see that it's an alcohol. And it turns out that being an alcohol is the most important thing about the molecule. It's going to tell you how it behaves. Methanol is also called uh, wood alcohol, and it's toxic. It's kind of famous for having been put in cough syrup during the Depression, and I don't know whether it was on accident or what. I think it was probably an accident. And it killed and caused blindness in many, many people. This is also during Prohibition. A lot of people drank cough syrup for the alcohol in it. So it was kind of a disaster. It is super toxic. One sip would cause blindness. A couple of sips would kill you. It's a flammable liquid. It's often used in camp stoves. And it's got that alcohol smell, like rubbing alcohol or um, vodka. They, they have kind of a medicine-y smell. And this wood alcohol has got it. And it's got kind of a nasty taste. And anyway, you shouldn't taste it. It's toxic. And if you get it on your skin, it feels cold, like rubbing alcohol, because it evaporates right away. It's called wood alcohol because it's a byproduct of making coal from wood. Uh, to make charcoal, people take wood and basically put it in a kiln and heat it up with no oxygen. And it turns into charcoal and a bunch of liquids ooze off of it. So we get turpentine from there and we get wood alcohol. The next alcohol that's slightly more complicated has two carbons in it. And this is ethanol because of the two carbons, ane, single bond, all because of the uh, alcohol group in it, the OH. And this would be its condensed structural formula. And, you know, we get it from um, fermenting things. So if you take sugar and yeast, it produces CO2 and alcohol. This happens whether you're baking bread or you're making beer. It's pretty much the same process. Uh, don't worry if you are baking bread. It's not that much alcohol, and when you put it in the oven, it all evaporates. Eventually, as you do this process, if you're making beer or wine, is the alcohol content gets so high in the mixture that the yeast dies, and then, you know, it stops making alcohol. This is why alcohol that you make through fermentation is never that strong. Wine and beer, they only have so high an alcohol content before the yeast dies. If you wanted to make a higher alcohol content, you have to distill your mixture of water and alcohol that you have at that point.
So ethanol is the alcohol that you find in alcoholic beverages. It's also the alcohol that you find in gasohol. They make it from corn usually. And uh, a lot of times students ask me, why don't we just use all ethanol at the gas pump instead of oil, which is expensive and causes a lot of political problems because it all comes from the Middle East for the most part. We don't have a big supply of it here in our country. And the answer for that is we use so much gasoline that if we wanted it all to be corn alcohol, ethanol, we would have to pretty much plant our entire country and Canada and several other countries in corn and give up eating to have enough alcohol to fuel our cars and make our electricity. We just really use a lot of fossil fuels. So ethanol, we know a lot about it uh, because it's the most common alcohol. It's toxic and not just it gives you liver disease, it can kill you in one night. Be careful of this. When you get to college and uh, you're around an inexperienced drinker, you're an inexperienced drinker yourself, if somebody passes out at a party, it is not funny. If you can't wake them up, you should call 911. It's a flammable liquid, just like the other alcohols. It's got that medicinal smell and taste, just like the other alcohols. Feels cold on your skin. It's got all those alcohol properties that uh, methanol had. Propanol, that's a rubbing alcohol. It also is toxic. Uh, it's got that alcohol smell and taste. It's a flammable liquid. It feels cold. Here it is, four carbons with the OH group. There is um, an isomer for this. The OH could go in the middle. That would be different. Hmm. Now let's just uh, compare these chemicals, the alcohols, to hydrocarbons that are the same size. So methane, that's CH4, is just a hydrocarbon with one carbon and enough H's to fill out those four bonds. It's a colorless, odorless gas. It's natural gas. We use it as fuel. Ethane, pretty much the same. It's a colorless, odorless gas, and we burn it for fuel. Propane, same thing. Colorless, odorless gas. We burn it for fuel. Oh, hey, why does our natural gas, methane, stink so much if it's colorless and odorless? Well, we know it's colorless. You've never seen it. Uh, actually, they put that smelly stuff in there so you know if you have a leak. It's just a safety feature. So uh, these three things are very similar to each other. And the three alcohols are very similar to each other. Methane, flammable liquid, toxic, alcohol smell. And uh, ethanol, same thing, flammable liquid, toxic, smells like alcohol, feels like alcohol, cold on the skin. And, you know, these three things are very similar to each other. And these three things are very similar to each other. And you might be feeling like these things should be pretty similar. Look at their formulas, C2H6, C2H6O. They only differ by one O. That's the only difference. You might think, they should be alike. Whereas these things, uh, they don't look that similar. This one has got one C. This one's got three Cs. This has got eight H's. That's only got four H's. You might be thinking, wow, they're probably not very much alike. But it turns out that it's the functional group that is the most important part of the molecule, pretty much. These three things are very, very similar to each other because they all have the same functional group. It turns out the functional group is much more important than how many C's and H's are in the thing. And that's why it's called the functional group. And I think that's all you need to know about that.